entire life I've been exposed to abstract painting and I remember when I was a kid I didn't have much use for it and then I started to I think understand abstract painting and I got to the point where I'm, I'm, I'm very very interested in abstract expressionism which you know is something that happened 50 years ago and um, a lot of work today in what we call our postmodern times uh, is context driven so there's some context for the work and then the work is sort of a demonstration of that context and uh, you get a lot of weird stuff to look at that way, I think. I'm, I'm what I would call a modernist. I, I'm like one of the old guys. I, I still think that there's plenty of uh, ground to cover in modernism. So I, I'm sort of an old-fashioned painter. I, I don't really consider myself a postmodernist. All my life I've always done figurative and non-figurative work, my entire life, since the 60s. And uh, I've always been okay with that. Because they're just different languages, ultimately it comes down to what do your marks mean? So when you're doing a portrait, maybe it means the guy's nose or the, the reflection in his eye. Or, but you know, the, specifically when you're doing realistic work, your marks are trying to represent something that can be seen with the human eyes. Uh, Marks can mean other things. That one of the interesting, what fascinated me about abstract expressionism is that there was aspects of it where the marks weren't really referring to anything. They, they were what they were. They were paint splashing and stuff. And it, it wasn't uh, representational. It was presenting some idea or some mood or some notion. I've done a lot of different painting and I've painted a lot of different ways. And, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a brush painting sort of guy. And, uh, recently, I've been doing these pieces where I hardly use brushes at all. And, uh, uh, you know, sort of one thing leads to another. And uh, I, I don't even remember how I came up with this process. I, I remember that I was doing this when I was a kid in the 70s. I started painting like this and then really forgot all about it. And recently, I was looking at some old stuff and I, I saw these things that I'd done in the 70s, I thought, man, that was cool stuff. I, I really want to do it again. So I started using this curious method of painting that I kind of invented in the 70s, which uh, involved um, printing or brushing paint onto the canvas, letting it dry for a while, and then hosing it off. And uh, it creates a very splashy looking kind of abex mark, which is, uh, at a glance, looks like splashy paint, then you realize that it's printed on there. And what it allows me to do is create uh, a very um, contrasty, very graphic, hard-edged, exciting kind of uh, a splash, a toshes and whatever, just a, a, a mark. And then I'll, I'll integrate it into some kind of a uh, composition. It creates a starting point for the paintings for me, this particular series. 
it's just a way to start. And uh, I kind of like the arbitrary, accidental kind of splashiness of it. And uh, I don't give a lot of thought to what I'm doing here. It just, uh, it's hard to say what organizes the activity. And uh, I found you can use various materials and you can do different things with them. You don't have to, I don't always use a square of uh, paper towel. Sometimes I use clothing or rope or other things. And uh, the, uh, I keep the ones that are interesting, paint over the other ones. <laughs> so uh, when I was going to Notre Dame in the early 70s, we had this uh, incredible, incredible facility, uh, which was the old athletic uh, field house. And it was, a, it was a full indoor dirt track, the first one in the United States. And it had a boxing room and a fencing room and locker rooms. And, and the art department got to occupy the old field house for about 10 years. And I was in there during that time. And uh, I was doing acrylic paintings. and. I was in a section of the building where there was uh, shower stalls that still worked. You walk into a room and there was like 12 shower heads all the way around. It was a great big shower and they were still functional. I would do these great big paintings in acrylic, drag them into the shower and hose them off with the shower heads. And I, and I found that if you let the paint dry partially and then you hose the paintings off, that you get this really graphic looking effect in your paintings. So I started doing this maybe in 1973 and then forgot all about it. And uh, a couple of years ago, I, I remember doing it and I decided I was going to start doing paintings like that again to entertain myself. So uh, it's one of the reasons I installed a hose in the front of my building so I could hose off paintings and feed my plants. So what I'm going to do now is I, I got a couple that I put some paint on and I'm going to hose them off just to see what they look like. And the paint may wash all the way off, but it usually it leaves a kind of a graphic looking residue which I find appealing and I, I use it as a basis for painting. I was a printmaker for years and years and these kind of reminded me of uh, an intaglio etching process called straight bite. And, and they look a lot like straight bites if you've ever been a printer. And, and that kind of intrigued me too. The, uh, the graphic aspect of them uh, I, I find appealing. I like the crisp, hard edgeness of them. At the same time, they're real sloppy, so this is odd and interesting mix to me. Thank you.